Today we will talk about our fish disease case number 21. Yes, already 21 cases and shortly more to come. And it was about a case of a cardinal tetras, uh, which were tank raised uh, by an importer. And they were dying after a few days, 25 days with white patches. So I took some of those fish to my, my laboratory and because I wanted to investigate what was going on during the weeks when the fish developed this kind of symptom. This is how it looks like. Only one or two in a batch of cardinals with this kind of patch of the body, the loss of the blue color. So something which is seemed to be very common from certain suppliers, from certain regions, certain countries. Uh, I will not name a few. It's not so common from the wild. It's particularly tank-raised cardinals, which seems to show this problem. And during the few weeks I had it in my laboratory, we did some testing on diseases. And afterwards, we also did some testing on uh, how can we treat, how can we make the fish healthier and try to survive this uh, disease. Well, in the beginning stage, when we received the fish, see, we had here one swimming here with that discoloration, that patch in the body. The fish looks very healthy, still swimming well, eating well. Look, all the others looking in good stage. Here after day one, that's how it looked like. And after day 12, that same cardinal had a much larger patch, which I show here. Much more loss of the blue color. So the stages were advancing. So after 12 days, that's how badly it looked like. And the fish started to become more nervous, uh, showing some stressed behavior, uh, uh, more separating from the group. So 14 days again, a few days later, the patch really started to grow bigger and larger. And the fish were suffering more, more than, uh, than the days before. And even after day 23, here is 14, which I just showed here at 23. It was getting more larger, half, nearly half the body. The colors were disappeared and a big patch was appearing. So that's day 23. So this is uh, 21 days, a few days before I show here how the disease developed. You see the, if you can see the respiration of the fish very fast. Here, here, see how he's suffering also respiration. So somewhere the body, was in very badly stressed situation. So that's the fish we're going to examine. And I took autopsy from the, the skin tissue, of course, the tissue which we saw it was damaged with lesion. And we found all those little groups of spores, sporozoa, which is called Pleistophora, or the, could be determined as Pleistophora. That's the Neon disease. We found that in the muscular tissue. And here we see them in a high magnification, 400. And you see inside are many, many little spores, little parasites, in causing those white discoloration by the, the tissue uh, of, the, of the muscular tissue. On the other hand, you also found some tubercles also in the muscular tissue. This is a part of the spine. See, here is the sporozoa, here is sporozoa, but here are tubercles. It's a, another kind of lesion, usually caused by mycobacterium. Here we see again the Pleistophora, and here we, we see some development here of a tubercle starting. So there's a difference in, in, in uh, pathological observation. Here you see the, the spine of the fish, and you see here the sporozoa. And here we see some starting of tubercles. So this is a mix of combination we found. Here again, another picture with tubercles and the sporozoa. The tubercles here, the darker ones, and the more brighter ones are the sporozoa. So the fish was very suffering from two problems, and particularly the mycobacterium is a worrying thing because this is uh, also killing the fish. While the fish with a sporozoa infection can live a long time with that neon disease. We call that used to call that neon disease, the white patches. But tubercles is something that the fish will waste away eventually because it's usually caused by 
mycobacterium uh, or fish tuberculosis, which can be defined by a laboratory, but very difficult to treat. On the other hand, also the parasitic infection is very difficult to treat. So what can we do with a fish like this? Well, the first thing you should do is try to discover as soon as possible this problem and put the fish in, in a quarantine tank because they are spreaders. They can spread it to the other fish, particularly when the other fish are eating each other, particularly when they're eating the disease or the dead fish. So remove it. So the badly damaged fish, when it's badly, badly damaged, you, you should euthanize it. You can use Narcomor Plus from Macora Munster, which is a, a very tranquil, safe and, and animal-friendly uh, uh, euthanization pr uh, problem, uh, solvation, so that the fish is not suffering when you kill it. Treating, well, you can treat it while giving food with pro and prebiotics to restore immunity, particularly the remaining healthy fish. And we have a food which is called Dr. Basley or Biofish Food Fuko, where you can treat 20 days only with that food, no other, which helps you that the fish become more resistant to parasitic and bacterial infections. And particularly, it helps the fish to recover during bacterial infections. Antibiotics, well, it best could be shown in a laboratory with an antibiogram. And some people use minocycline or oxytetracycline. It's a good choice, but uh, to be honest, it will not so always perfectly control the tuberculosis because it's inside capsules where that uh, bacteria cannot be reached with antibiotic. And to, to the other hand, the sporozoa infection cannot be treated. This is a problem by the breeder. So the breeder should solve it. He should uh, eliminate the, the origin of the sporozoa and select his breeding pairs to avoid that sporozoa spread in the community. So this is how the remaining fish looked like after the 20 days of feeding. We had no more recurrence. So we had here one fish with some darker patch here. I'll show it again here. Uh, there was one with some darker patch, but he seemed to do well and he did not develop later on. Uh, here, this one here. He did not develop uh, later on any uh, infection. And I had these fish then in my home aquarium for the next uh, year. So it's, uh, Seems to be no problem. This is the same kind of sporozoa infection showed here in uh, a ruminose tetra, a tank raised uh, ruminose tetra. You can see this is typical neon disease caused by the sporozoa pleistophora. Sometimes it's confusing to identify pleistophora, so I always recommend use a microscope because here you see a white patch which is caused by tetrahymena parasites. Or this is columnaris disease, which is a bacterial infection, not a porosporozoa infection. And this can be treated with a proper antibiotic uh, treatment. So I explain more in my, in my training courses on fish diseases, how to treat a columnaris disease. So a microscope helps you, like I showed you previously, to determine this problem. So I hope this case helped you to, to be well informed about the fish disease and how to solve this kind of problem. So... Thank you for the attention and I hope you stay tuned for the next cases to come.